Hey friends, welcome back. This week I have been focusing on revamping my boudoir studio. I always feel like the beginning of the year is a really great time to declutter and bring out the old and bring in the new and just it's a really great opportunity and I just kind of get this urge to redo things and make them better and more fun. So that's what I have been doing this week. So we're gonna revamp some of my studio, really just kind of move things around, dress things up, add some new things, take some old things away, that kind of thing. Nothing absolutely crazy, like I'm not knocking on walls <laughs> and, and doing anything insane like that, although I have been known to. That is not the goal for right now. There are some larger projects like that in the works for inside my house this year, but um, that's not happening out here in the studio. So no worries there. It's not gonna be insane like that. Also today, we're gonna discuss my three biggest tips for entrepreneurs. We'll get to that a little bit later. For now, we're gonna start on this studio redo. Now this pink settee that I have is actually one of my favorite elements for boudoir sessions. There's a lot of really great ways to pose someone on this settee, and it's just really gorgeous, it's really feminine, and it just really goes with the vibe of my overall brand, and um, the women that come in just really love it. But it's kind of bland and boring. I've been using it just against this white wall with some white curtains, in the background for several years and it's time to dress it up a little. I want to dress it up a little and give it more of an oil painting kind of vibe, like be the work of art kind of vibe. So that's one of the things that we are going to do today. We are also going to do some revamping on my actual bedroom set with the bed and um, probably some other small little nooks and crannies of things here in the studio as well. I've already been out shopping and picked up some items that I think will uh, be good for these revamps and uh, yeah, let's get started. Okay, this set is now complete. Now, I did add this chandelier off camera 
and I can't find the candle cups that I know I own that will go in it. So I'm gonna have to go buy some new ones. And that's why you didn't see this on film because I was mad because I spent so long searching for those candles and could not find them. But look at this set, how stunning is that? So excited to get somebody in it. Okay, now that this set is finished, let's talk about my top three tips for being an entrepreneur. And we're gonna go in reverse order. Number three, don't take on clients or projects that don't align with your goals and values. Now why? Because it muddies the waters about what your brand is all about and it kind of reeks of desperation. Every client is not your client and every job is not your job. Every project is not your project. I get asked to shoot weddings all the time and there was a time 15 to 20 years ago when I did shoot weddings, but it's become, it became apparent to me pretty quickly over time that it wasn't where my passion was, it wasn't what I loved, and I don't bring my best work when it's not something that I love. I love shooting boudoir, so that's what I shoot. I don't shoot kids and families. On occasion, I may do some as a favor for friends, but it's definitely not something that I take on as uh, paid gigs but from strangers. I just don't do it. It's not it's not what I love, it's not what I'm about, and it doesn't align with my goals. So there's just no point in doing it. Not everything is about getting a paycheck. Some things are about doing what makes the most sense for you and your brand. All right, we're gonna revamp my bedroom set next. A little bit of revamp for the studio. It was just time for a new look. I think that is pretty darn stunning. Now that this set is all complete, and I'm so happy with it, I think it's beautiful and dramatic, and that's exactly what I was going for. Let's talk about tip number two. Tip number two is to always ask your clients for input, and always at least consider that criticism seriously. Now, I know that we have heard the saying, the customer is always right for all of eternity, right? It's not true. The customer is not always right. However, sometimes they have really great insight and really great criticism, and you should absolutely consider it. Now, doesn't mean you have to do it. Doesn't mean you have to take it to heart, because sometimes it's not good criticism, sometimes it's not fair criticism, and sometimes, you know, some people are just really difficult. And that's okay, it is what it is, but, if you're not asking for your client's thoughts, then you have no way to improve. Because what you think they want may not actually be what they want. For instance, there was a few years ago where I seriously considered moving out of my home space here for my photo studio and getting a commercial space. And I took a poll of all my clients and said, hey, how would you feel if I did this? And they all said, and this surprised me, they all said, actually, we like your home space better than the idea of a commercial space. It was private, it felt comfortable, and I'm not sure that I would have been as comfortable in a commercial setting. They, they all agreed that the privacy of my home studio, because of the nature of Bouwal, was um, much more comforting than the idea of a commercial setup. And that surprised me, because I always felt like being in a commercial space lends itself to a certain amount of legitimacy that a home space doesn't give you. But the nature of my business is very, very intimate. And my clients like that intimacy of being in a home space. So 
I might have made a very costly decision because the commercial space is not inexpensive and it wouldn't necessarily have benefited me in the ways that I thought that it might because my existing clients didn't feel like that was going to be necessary and so they might have even chosen someone else. So ask your clients what they think especially if you're getting ready to do something big. Get their opinions because that matters. So let's see the space all the way around. This is my little corner spot that I just redid a few years ago and I really love this little space so I'm not going to make any tweaks to that. I did remove some of the extra backgrounds that I had stored up this way. I have this pole with backgrounds that can move and I don't almost never use them. I left the black one up because every now and then you want a black background, but it's just not very often. And they're tied up so that they're out of the way when I'm shooting. This blue chair and a uh, little vase is very, very minimalistic, but I like sometimes to have that opportunity to do minimalism. If I want to use just my white wall and do something very, very minimalistic here, I can easily move that vase and that chair out of the way and have the space necessary to do a minimalistic session. Moving around is my brand new set. Look how stunning that is. It looks gorgeous. Uh, like I said, I do need to get new candle cups for this chandelier, which frankly won't be in very many sessions unless I'm standing up here and shooting down, which I do like to do on some circumstances. There is my AC unit for the studio. And coming around full circle, there is my bedroom setup, which just looks so amazing, I think. I do also have this little hallway over here, which is um, some additional props and storage space. So I have lots of other pieces of fabric and other props that I can pull out pretty much any time that I want. And then back over here is this other set that I built um, a year and a half ago, two years ago. I just love this gold leaf. It just gives a lot of really great variety to potential sessions. So I'm leaving that alone as well. I will point out, you notice that in this sequin backdrop, the light from my window over there comes through the backdrop. But when I'm photographing, I am a strobe shooter. So the strobes blow that light out and all you see is the actual backdrop curtain when I'm shooting. So that light filtering through with constant light doesn't show up. I love natural light and it photographs beautifully when it's filtered correctly, but I like to be in full control of the lighting and everything to do with my sessions. Strobes give me that ability to be in 100% control of the quality of the light, and I love that about it. Not everybody shoots that way, perfectly okay. All right, let's talk about tip number one for entrepreneurs, and that is never get comfortable. I mean that, and that sounds terrifying, but when you get comfortable, you get complacent, and complacency equals dying businesses. It just does. You have to stay on your toes. You have to always be looking for new ideas. You have to always be thinking. Don't get comfortable. Getting comfortable means you're probably not growing. You can get mildly comfortable if all you're trying to do is maintain your current level of growth. But if you want to grow, being comfortable is not the way to do it. You will not grow if you are comfortable. Growth happens when we are very, very uncomfortable. That's true about business. That's true about life. Be okay with being massively uncomfortable. Oh my gosh, you guys, I had so much fun working on my studio this week. Thank you so much for joining me. Your presence here is so appreciated. I hope that you enjoyed this video. As always, please like and subscribe and leave your comments down below. And I will see you next week.